Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Gail, and today we are going to be using techniques for identifying trends. Now, before we get started, I want to make sure everybody reads over the Nadex Risk Disclaimer. Basically, any type of trading, including binary options, does carry risk, and you should never trade with money you cannot afford to lose. This is an educational session, so please read over the disclaimer and then we'll get started. Um, Omar, I thought I received that. Uh, could you please send me another email? And also make sure to check your spam in uh, your spam folder because sometimes um, it will get stuck in spam. Okay, now for those of you that do not know me, my name is Gail Mercer and I have over 15 years of trading experience. I started out with a company that programmed indicators for TradeStation and MultiCharts and NinjaTrader and I just fell in love with the price bars. I thought that was so neat and I started studying on it. Um, I do specialize in price action volume analysis and divergence because I believe they are leading indicators. I'm also a frequent contributor to Stocks and Commodities, Traders World, and Top Shelf Magazine. I've also been a speaker at Traders Expo, Traders World Online Expo, and the Wyckoff Conference. I'm also the author of Trading Nadex Binary Options, Keeping It Simple Strategies, and the new Trader's Guide to Trading Nadex Binary Options in Spreads. Both of these books can be purchased either on my website or on Amazon. Now today's discussion, is we're really going to be focused on identifying trends using pivot highs and pivot lows. Now, the first question you need to answer, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to ask, is how do you identify a trend? Well, support and resistance, which are created by pivot highs and pivot lows, define the trend. In other words, is price making higher highs and higher lows, or is price making lower lows and lower highs? This is the basic definition of a trend. Now, this is just a sketch of a typical uptrend. You can see it forms a high, then it forms a low, then it forms a higher high, then it forms a higher low, then it forms a higher high, then it forms a higher low. A downtrend is just the opposite. You have lower highs and lower lows. So you have a high, then a low, then a lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. When is a uptrend in trouble? If the previous high is tested in a low forms with a lower high, that's usually when the uptrend is in trouble. Oh, thank you. For some reason it was changing on one and not the other. Okay, so let's go back over an uptrend now that you can see it. We have higher highs and we have higher lows. Now, each one of these lows are going to be reversal bars or pivot lows. Each of these highs are going to be pivot highs, okay? In the downtrend, you can see that you're making lower highs and lower lows. Again, each one of these will be formed by pivot highs and pivot lows. Now, this is where you can see that the high here, it was tested, but it was rejected with a reversal bar. Then it breaks through the low, forms a lower high. This is when you know, this tells you the trend may be getting weak, okay? But this one right here confirms that this trend is in trouble. You would expect a test of that low. 
Does everybody understand that? Okay. Now, when is a downtrend in trouble? Okay. The down trouble is the downtrend is in trouble when the low is tested and there is a rejection. Okay. The rejection will be a reversal bar. And once that reversal bar forms, you will make a new high followed by a higher low. Okay. This is when you know right here, this tells you there's weakness in the trend. This is the confirmation that this trend is now weak and it's probably reversing. Okay. Now, this is a example of trends. And what we're going to do is just kind of start out over here on the left-hand side and walk through it, okay? So here, you're actually in a downtrend. You have a high form here. Now, at this point, the high is still lower, okay? But then you form the low. When you form this higher low here, this is an indication that you have a weakness in the trend, okay? Then you make a higher high followed by a higher low. At this point, you know that you are in an uptrend. And this is actually a great area right here because it's a reversal bar. It's a great area to do an out of the money binary option. Okay. Now, if you do, what would your anticipation be? The anticipation is that this high would be exceeded. Does everybody follow that? Then the high, it forms a new high. It comes back and forms a higher low again with a reversal bar. And again, you are anticipating that that high will be exceeded. Why will the high be exceeded? Because you're in an uptrend. This higher low right here, combined with a higher high, tells you you are in an uptrend. Now, the anticipation is that this high will be exceeded because you are in an uptrend. Now, here you get a higher high, but the problem with this higher high is that it does not sustain the action above the previous high. In other words, it went up, but the actual high closed below the previous high. This trend is getting weak. Do you all understand that? If the trend is weak, what would you expect? You would expect a lower high to form. The lower low forms right here. This is your higher low, and that was the previous higher low. You have now made a lower low. It is confirmed when this lower high right here forms and it forms a reversal bar to the downside at the end of this bar. Should a new low be put in? Yes, you get a new low. When the low forms, it forms a reversal bar. What would you expect off of this low that forms a reversal bar? Is the trend in trouble? No, the trend is not in trouble, but you would be anticipating a retracement. The retracement should actually be lower than this high. Does everybody understand that? Price comes up, 
It makes a lower high, just as we anticipated. And then it comes down, but it fails to test this low. Do you see that? This is the twin bar formation. When the twin bar formation forms, it may come back and test this high right here. Now, this is going to be an important area, okay? Why? And I'm not talking about these price bars, but just this blue line is going to be very important. The reason that it's going to be important is does it offer resistance? In other words, does it offer sufficient resistance to keep that price Every pivot high, every pivot low offers support and resistance, okay? What happens? Price comes back to test the area, forms a strong reversal to the downside, and then price goes down. It retraces and forms a lower high on this line. And again, you could have entered a binary on this bar, or you could have entered one here because this confirms that the downtrend is still intact. Do y'all understand that? A retracement does not take out the prior high or low depending on the direction of the retracement, Sharon. In other words, both of these are actual retracements, okay? What makes them retracements? The fact that this blue line right here held. They did not exceed that blue line. They could not get price above that blue line and close above that blue line. That makes it a retracement. Now, on both of these, you would be anticipating this line right here to be tested. And it should actually exceed that line, okay? Because this was the prior low. Do y'all see that? Now, it exceeds it, and where does it go? It goes to this low right here. And what happens, it forms a three bar pivot to the upside and it goes back up to test this area right here. Does it break through that area? No. This is where you could have actually traded a short binary with anticipation that it would test this area. Right here, you know that's not gonna happen. Why? Because now you have formed a higher low. Between the two, this low is higher than this low. Do y'all see that? It comes back to test these blue lines and it forms a high. Then it forms the low right here. Again, this is what? This is a higher low. Okay, when that low forms, you know that they're going to go on and make a new high. Does everybody understand that so far? Now, where will the new high likely be? Again, if you look over here, you have a high here, you have one here, one here and one here. Do y'all see that? This is the one that stops it right here. Then it comes down, it forms a higher low. Again, off of the higher low, you are anticipating that this high will be exceeded. 
instead it forms what's called a double top okay in other words it came back to the previous area and what happens it forms a reversal bar to the downside you are anticipating that this low will be exceeded it exceeds that low goes to the next low then forms a lower high anytime it forms a lower high that's giving you a potential entry into the downtrend makes a new low makes a new lower high and again if you're looking at this right here on this bar you're expecting this low to be taken out and you can say okay what is my next low this is the next low this is the one that should be exceeded or it should make it down to this low do y'all understand that So then it forms a new low, forms a lower high, and notice that this lower high is just about in the vicinity of this previous low. Do you notice that? This is what creates the zigzag patterns that form the trends. It's all off of support and resistance pivot highs pivot lows at this point you can expect this low to be exceeded it exceeds that low and then it goes back up and forms a new lower high again expectation is that low will be exceeded does that make sense to everybody and if you draw this out you can actually draw the zigzag pattern right onto your chart do you see that and there is no secret number of days to look back for prior support and resistance Normally, I will start with the immediate area, okay? But then, like when it gets into this new territory, I start looking back further to say, okay, what was the last ho uh, lo what was the last low and what was the last high? How do you draw the lines? Uh, Nadex actually has a horizontal line that you can draw, Frank you can do that um i actually have an indicator that will draw these lines for me and i'll, I'll show you that any other questions about this chart now there can be a lot of trends going on at the same time okay um this is a 15 minute chart you know it, there's really no magical expiration okay um typically i trade a 15 minute because i like a 15 minute chart so i trade a two hour but you could also trade a dailies because i mean forex has six daily expirations it, it doesn't matter you know if let's say that you're in a trend like uh, a strong trend like it is over here and I'll tell you the difference um, you have a low here then you have another low here and then you have another low here okay when I'm trading and I'm looking at this you know when I get distance between these I call that my sweet spot okay so in that case, I could use a two hour in a daily combination. 
because I know we're trending downwards and more likely than not, the trend will continue. Which chart is best suited for someone that trades part-time, not having enough to, time to monitor the trade? You could trade dailies. You could trade 15 minutes, either one. Depends on how much time you have. Um, where I get called is I believe I'm in a trend only to find out the trend I'm trading is actually a counter trend correction on the next higher time frame. You know, that's actually a really good question, Rod, uh, Ron, because that happens a lot, actually. Okay. Um, I would be willing to say that on this particular chart, that if you're looking at it, then you have, this is an uptrend, and then you have this small little downtrend here. And if you're drawing the zigzag, this is the way it goes. Okay, so this is a very small downtrend. Then you have this really small uptrend here, okay? The key to it is if you are walking through the trend, just as you see it right here, then this is your sign of trouble, okay? Because it has formed a higher low. Um, this would be your point of danger because now you have formed a double top, okay? And I'll, I'll show you later, but if there's any question about it, if you have the opportunity to take profits, you take profits. Does that make sense, Ron? And to me, this is what makes trading binary options easier because you do have that advantage. And I'll show you that on a later chart as well. Now, over here, this is on the USD JPY as well. And again, you know, um, you can see that you're in an uptrend. So if you just kind of draw your zigzag on here, all right, this is your danger point right here. Why is that a danger point? Because you just made a lower high, okay? So then you go down, go down, go down, and then you make this lower high here. Again, that's an entry point, and then you make your final low over here. Once you make this low, then your trend is changing, okay? If you're just drawing the zigzag on here, then you can see, hey, you know, this is in trouble. Now, you make the lower high, then you make a low here. You make a high, then you make this lower high here. Do you see the difference here? It shouldn't have done that. This is confirmed by the high right here, followed by the high, uh, the lower high here. All right, when it exceeded this high, okay, if you just extended that line out, you can see right here, even though it made a higher high, do you see how that bar closed under it? That's what formed that pivot in the zigzag, okay? Now, if you go down, you can see, you can just sketch these out and see, okay, we're still in a downtrend. This is what most people refer to as a congestion area. Do y'all understand that? The clue in this is that it has tested the same high three times, okay? This is where I'm using a very low risk out of the money binary on these, okay? With an expectation that that low will be exceeded. Do y'all understand that? Now, this is a, a trade on the USD JPY, okay? Now, let's just draw the zigzag on here. And this is something that, you know, 
I personally don't use on my charts just because I know already what the zigzag looks like. Do you see how it made that double top right here? And this is my entry bar right here. Okay. So I'm down $4.25. The risk on the trade is 2725 because my entry price was 7275. All right, I have a profit target at $15. Now you know that because I've got this little gray box here. Okay. Now the question is, should I stay with the trade? What piece of information on that chart tells you more than likely you should stay with the trade? This bar right here. Why? It forms a pivot high. That's right. It's a it's a reject. It, I wouldn't really call it a rejection, Sharon. It's a lower high. Okay. This was your previous high line. Okay. This was it. You just made a lower high, which is confirming the double top formation. Do you see that? So to me, this is a trade I'm willing to, to hold and see if I get my profit target because price is confirming that we are now making lower highs. We have had three tests of a high and they don't like it, okay? On the very next bar, the profit target is filled. Did it help that I was really close to expiration? Probably. Did it help that price was moving? Yes. But the clue that, hey, should I exit or should I hold was this bar right here that confirmed this double top formation would hold. Do y'all understand that? Um, Ted, you're asking in the previous slide, did you sell an out of the money binary? On that particular one, no, I did not, but I typically always use out of the money binaries. Very seldom do I use any other type of binary option. My favorite is OTM. And if I cannot do an out of the money binary, I probably won't do a binary. And that comes into trader personality more than anything else. Your, your personality, your risk tolerance, you know, which one are you going to use? And it has nothing to do with, you know, trending markets. You know, I know some people that will do um, at the money. I have some that will do in the money. Those are not my trading types. How do you exit if it's not going your way? Well, number one, Frank, if I'm not comfortable with the risk, I don't go in it. That's simple, okay? Um, in this case, you know, if this bar here had went up, okay, I probably would have exited. But a lot of times on the out of the money binaries that I do, it's just not an option. Okay. Either you're going to make money or you're not. Okay. Once in a while I can say, Hmm, no, I don't like this price bar formation. I'm going to go ahead and exit. But again, this is why, you know, I love Nadex, you know, 
I can say, hey, I don't mind risking $27.25 to potentially make $57. I mean, that's pretty good risk to reward ratios. Why would I need a longer term binary on this? This was a two hour binary. In fact, if you notice, the profit target was filled at 1058. Okay, Chuck. All right, let's go back and look at the entry time. Okay, if I go back and look at the entry time, it was at 942. I had 14 minutes until expiration. Okay. This was at 42. I exited at 58. So do you really need a two hour binary? Not really. You can create even a, a 15 minute binary just like this one was. Do y'all understand that? Now, what about if I was on a 60 minute chart? Okay, I would need at least a two hour binary if I expected the next price bar to move in my favor. Do y'all understand that? And, and this is what the price bars kind of answer the question for you. If you're reading them correctly, this is a reversal bar to the downside. Okay, this is a 15 minute chart. So, I need at least 15 minutes for that next bar to develop. That's provided that price is moving. When you get into trading, let's say the evening hours, you know, if you're entering a binary option, let's say six o'clock at night, you're gonna need minimum two hours. You might need five hours depending on how slow the market is moving. Because you could also get, um, it's like a couple of inside bars here, and then it moves in your favor. In this case, it was during the US session. So I kind of knew that the price was moving and it was gonna move very quickly. It's a three bar pivot formation. This is a pivot high because it is higher than the previous bar and the red bar, followed by a bearish candlestick, which is right here. That makes it a pivot high. Oh, I love trading in Asia, Ron. It's one of my favorite markets to trade, actually. Okay. Now here's another way of looking at it. And you know, if you're using a charting platform like Ninja Trader, okay, um, multi charts, they all have zigzag indicators built into them. And you can clearly see, okay, we had a high, this was a double bottom formation, higher high, higher low, higher high. Oops, I'm in trouble, I've got a lower high. Do y'all see that? Then we go down, we make a lower high, followed by a lower low, followed by a high, followed by a higher low. Oops, I'm in trouble. If you looked right here at the green dot, you can see, hey, <laughs> it just tried to test that low and it failed, okay? Now, when you get these formations, and Ron, this is the answer to your question as well, right here. Do you see how that more or less formed a head and shoulder pattern? That's what told you this was probably a retracement on a higher time frame. Do you see that, Ron? Now, this line of congestion dots tells me the same thing. Okay, then it moves lower and moves back up, okay? And then you get, this is like a congestion period and 
if I had the time on here, that was probably between more than likely, I would say that was, you know, between six to eight. That's your 15 minute. And then, of course, Asia opens and down it comes and it's moving again. What happens here? You get that same little green dot that you got over here. That's actually stochastics divergence. Okay. And then it goes up, forms a double top formation, goes back to test it here, and then takes it out the low. It's just another way of looking at it. Okay. And again, there's no right or wrong. It's whatever is easier for you to look at. Okay. Um, somebody's asking, will I be going over examples of five-minute trades? No, I will not. I personally will not trade five minute binaries. So, all right, now oop. this is a, an example on the Aussie dollar. Notice I have pretty much the same risk on this one. I mean, this is like my typical risk. If I had to average all of my risk out, it would probably be about $25, $27, just about on all of my trades. Okay, now do you see how it came right here? You made a lower high and it came back and tested it, but it rejected it right here. In other words, it went up, but it closed down below it. That was my entry point. Okay, my risk was $27. Again, I'm short, so you have to subtract that number from 100. Okay. And let's see what happens. On the next chart, okay, now do y'all see how it approached this low right here? What happened when it approached that low? It was rejected. Now notice that this is a five minute chart. I zero down because I saw that price bar forming. So I went down to a five minute and said, oh my gosh, it's a reversal bar to the upside. Now here's the issue. There was 30 minutes left in here, okay? On this trade, there's 30 minutes left. That's six five minute bars, okay? And six five minute bars, that's not enough for a retracement because it could come all the way back up here and test that high. And I know that, okay? I'm not going to give up what I have made on this trade. I've made $14.15, okay? I'm not going to give that up. My job as a trader is to take profits. And if I fail to take profits, I have failed my job as a trader. So I close out the position. Then what happens? <laughs> we have a lower high form and it forms a reversal bar. Do y'all see that? So here's my last high. Here's the current high. I jumped back in and this time the risk on the trade was $22.75. Again, right about the $25 mark. Okay. So I jumped back in. In other words, I didn't wait to see if this retracement would then push it down. I took my profits because it was offering profits. Do y'all understand that? And what makes this so easy is that when you're trading Nadex, you're paying a flat fee of $2 per contract. That's in and out. Now they do have different if you trade so many contracts, but I'm saying if you're trading J 
just one or two contracts, you're paying $2, okay? If you try to trade this on 4X, you're paying a pip spread. Everybody knows that, right? So if you're paying a pip spread, you know, it's 1.2 pips in. So basically, you're paying a, uh, $10.20 in and $20.20 out. Do y'all understand that? So that trade, round trip, will cost you $20.40. And that's on average, because if it is a very volatile market, this can go up. It could also go down, okay? That means in order to just be at break even, price has to move at least on average about four pips, right? and that's trading the spot side. You don't have those issues when you're trading the binaries. You have the flat fee of $2. That's less than a cup of coffee, guys. The double bottom didn't scare you. No, why would it scare me? Okay, this was the double bottom. Okay, this is where I exited the first trade, Ron. But now, what is price telling you? This is a pivot bar formation. It is a three bar reversal, okay? And it's closing down here, which is under the low of this bar. The next bar will be low. What is my anticipation? That this low will be tested. Now, pay attention, okay? Look at the indicative price, 75.39. 75.38 is the strike, okay? Now, to make money using this Forex pair, I would have to at least come down to here after I paid for my pip spread, right? But with a binary, it doesn't have to do that. It just has to be below, well, it could be equal to 75.38 or lower. Understand? So I'm at 39.4. That's one and a half pips that it has to move. And I'm only going to pay $2. Notice I also have a profit target here. Do y'all see that? Parf I always set the target at 15. I am a creature of habit. This is the way I trade. Enter the trade, set a profit target at 15 on shorts. Enter the trade, set a profit target at 80 to 85 on the longs. Does everybody understand that? And what happens? It never fills the profit target. Okay, you can tell that because you see the dark gray box. Okay, this is what tells you it never fills the profit target. Okay, and it expires in the money, literally just uh, probably one tick below 75.38 and the full profit potential is realized. Okay, but well, the full payout was realized. The profit was actually 77.25 after you subtract the risk. And Ron, this goes back to your question, would the double bottom have scared me on Forex? Yes, because it's more expensive, you need more movement, okay? But on binaries, I knew that it should get down to here and time decay was working in my favor. Does everybody understand that? Okay, 
when I trade an out of the money, I'm usually risking 25 to $30. Okay. That is my typical risk. Sometimes it's under 25, sometimes it's over 30. If I'm long, my profit target will always be between 80 and 85 because I am a creature of habit and I do the same thing over and over and over again. If I am short, my profit target is either 10 or 15. That does not mean that I do not monitor my trades. I am sitting at my computer pretty much the entire day. If I am in a trade, very seldom do I leave it. I'm always monitoring the trade, okay? Even if I have to take my iPad to the pool, I am going to be looking at my trade. Why won't I trade five minute binaries? It's just not my style. It, when I trade a five minute binary, I feel um, stressed. I feel like, oh, I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up, I gotta hurry up. That's not conducive to trading. You know, uh, there's a lot of, uh, especially guys, they love trading five minute binaries, but you know, guys have more testosterone than women do. I like the 20 minute binaries. You know, I don't feel rushed to take a trade. All right. I feel very calm, very calm, cool and collected. Get me on a five minute and I'm like, ah, ah, I, I gotta enter, I gotta enter, I gotta enter. I can't trade that way. A lot of guys, it doesn't bother them. But that's really the difference between, you know, men traders and women traders. Men traders will tend to be more aggressive. You know, I can be aggressive if I get up in the right mood, but that's not my typical trading personality. And you do have to know your trading personality. All right, in summary, okay, if you combine pivot price pivots with support resistance and trend they're leading indicators but it requires a lot of focus okay and that means you can't be jumping around a lot of different markets because you have to pull up your chart and you have to start marking it okay and then you have to say okay is this trending up is it trending down is it sideways what are my price bars doing okay you really have to mark those charts to figure that out and then you have to practice, okay? As easy as I can pull up a chart and say, hey, here's your high, here's your low, this is what price is doing, it's because I've been doing it for 15 years, okay? It's going to take you a lot of practice to get to that point. How many trades do you typically have open at any given time? You know, that's kind of a hard question to answer, Ted, because it depends on the market and what I'm anticipating on the market. You know, um, I may not have any at all. I might have just a few, maybe three or four if the market's moving slow, but there's a couple of markets that I like that are moving. Uh, then again, I've been known to have 30 trades open at one time. And some of them will be two hours, some will be daily, some will be weeklies. You know, it's just, it depends on what the market's doing. Do I use moving averages for confirmation? No, I do not. Um, and Nicole, I designed my own indicators and that's what I use. Um, again, Omar, send me an email because I won't know your email address once I exit the go to web. Webinar. Okay. If you have any questions, you can email me, gm at tradershelpdesk.com, or you can visit my website, tradershelpdesk.com as well. Now, what I'd like to do is go over 
and just, you know, pull up some charts and look at them and let's mark them up and see what's going on. I will not be taking any trades because I've already told you this is an educational session. It's not designed to be uh, a trade room. So let's just go and let's look at some 20 minute binaries. Let's do Wall Street and let's just see what's going on. How many minutes do we have? We have nine minutes. Okay. I would be anticipating a test of this high right now. Do y'all see that? Why would I be anticipating a test of that high? Because if you connect the highs, you're still in an uptrend. I uh, most certainly can, Nicole. It is <laughs> tradershelpdesk.com and my email is gm at tradershelpdesk.com. When you're looking at highs, you have to look at the absolute high okay but when you're looking at okay is it going to break this high okay it does this price bar actually close above this high okay um is the demo account exactly the same as the real account, except you're in demo mode. Everything is the same. There can be some differences, Tom, but overall you're going to see that they pretty much are the same. And the difference is the number of market makers that provide the data for the demo versus the live accounts. But if you pull them up, and you can pull them up side by side. I mean, you open up, up, up an account with Nadex, okay? And you have one in demo mode and the other, let's say you have your demo in Edge, Microsoft Edge. You can use Mozilla and bring up your live trading platform. And then you can compare it, okay? And I have done that before, okay? I even have a video on my blog where, you know, I show you I've got demo over here and I've got the live account over here. You know, pretty much the same, you know? Uh, do you trade when there is major news like unemployment numbers? Of course. Okay, um, a market report, to me, that's just, that's a great time to trade. Because, you know, if you're using an out of the money binary, you need volatility. When can you expect volatility? At a market report. multiple time scale trend analysis will you explain it well i tell you what let me just open up uh this is a three minute chart on the dow okay and what most people don't understand is you know there, there's no magical time frame okay and what i'm telling you with trend analysis all you do is bring up another time frame over here. And in this case, let's set this to, let's set it to a 10 minute chart. No, I'd rather use a 15 minute.
Okay, so now we have, over here we have a three minute, over here we have a 15 minute, okay? There's not going to be any difference in what I do between the two, okay? The only thing I'm going to do that is different is mark this one up and say, okay, we were making higher highs, then we made a low, then we made a high, then we made a low, and then we made a high, then we made a low, then a high, then a low, now we made a high. We just made a low. If this price formation holds, okay, and this is a 15 minute chart, so it's got another four minutes, so it might hold, then that simply means that we're going to make a new high, okay? So this high will be taken out. Now, if I'm looking over to the three minute, does that confirm it? Okay. Well, we already knew that we were supposed to be making a high, in which we did. Okay. So now, if I do it like this, and I come over here, and I draw this one, we made a high, made a low, made a high, made a low, and we have made a high there, but it has not closed above this area. That means that this low might be tested. So you have a trend that might be reversing over here, but this one is not confirming it yet. And if it comes back to this area and forms a reversal bar, that may confirm it. But right now, it hasn't confirmed that this low is put in. And that's what you want to see. Your charts look different in demo. It's probably a setting. I trade crude in commodities. Um, in fact, Ron, I think on the crude post I had this week on binaryoptions.nadex, um, I mentioned the high at 46.50, I believe it was supposed to be tested. And right at the announcement, they tested it and went down. And that's what you're looking at. What happens on the test? And see, I would really anticipate a test right over here at this low. Now, it could come back to right here because that's the last low previous to this one that was rejected. There's always a test of support and resistance, always. And it is the result of that test that will identify whether the market will go up or down. Is there anything I don't trade? Sure there is. Um, I don't trade corn. I don't trade soybeans. I don't trade wheat because, you know, those types are, in my opinion, <laughs> for farmers. You know, there's seasonal um, aspects to, you know, the grains. So I don't train a, I don't trade bonds either, simply because Nadex don't, does not offer the bonds. Bitcoin, no, I don't trade Bitcoin either. You know, I trade eight different currencies plus the Dow, the NASDAQ, the ES, gold in crude. And uh, I do some stock options. And I mean, that's enough. I stay busy with that. Now this is where this one over here is telling you that more than likely this market will go up because you just had a low right here and that is a strong bar to the upside. It's a bullish bar, okay? 
And at the same time, you just went back and made a low right here. So I would be anticipating this to go up. Any questions on that? It truly needs to go up beyond that high. If it takes out that high, the next one would be this high. And you know, when you're trading the multiple time frames, you have to do exactly what you would do on this one over here and say, okay, does this one give me an entry into this chart over here? If the answer is yes, then you go for it. And then you choose a risk level. Does everybody understand that? Do I ever look at a one minute chart? No, it's too fast. It's got too much noise on it. And noise is, is just that it's noise. I don't want to see it. I don't want to try to analyze it. It's just a bunch of junk to me. The five minute would be better. Um, in my honest opinion, I don't think that anything improves your trades more than you. You know, being in the right mindset, being able to adapt to the change in market, that's what makes a difference. You know, I can usually sit here and trade a 15 minute all day long, you know, I really don't even have to look at a higher time frame but it's also because I've got 15 years of experience in the markets. You know, a new trader is probably, um, it would help a new trader more than what it would help me. And that's only because, you know, I've been looking at the markets for 15 years. What I see when I pull up a chart will be different from what a new trader that really has not traded more than, I would say five years, we'll see, okay? <clears throat> I trade usually a three and a 12 on my platform, Sharon, when I'm trading the 20 minute binaries. Yeah, it's, you know, knowing yourself is 90% of trading. It really is. Do you like a specific time of the day to place trades? Um, if the market's open, I can place a trade. You know, uh, and, and Ted, in all honesty, my clients laugh. They will swear I do not sleep because I'll trade Asia, I'll trade London, and I'll trade the U.S. session. Now, the U.S. session is typically the one I hate the worst uh, is the morning hour of the U.S. market. I hate that hour. Unless we have some major market reports that I can get into, I generally do not just trade the U.S. opening. I might place some longer term trades, but, you know, I don't think it's the London overlap. I think it's the U.S. traders, you know. Um, they just do some weird stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't trade the U.S. market opening typically. Usually after 10 o'clock, 
I'll come in and look at it and potentially place trades. But other than that, unless there's a market report, I generally don't trade it. But like today, we had four market reports at 8.30, and I was in a couple of currencies for that. And then we had the crude oil inventories, and so I was in for that one. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no other questions, thank you for joining us today.